YouTube! Welcome back to another card rating session, this time with the Pokemon Master himself, Azul GG. Welcome back, sir. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Glad to be back. Happy to have you here again. Uh, remind us who you are, what you do, and what you're up to. Yeah, so I'm a competitive Pokemon TCG player and content creator, uh, leading a bit, a little bit more towards content creation, I guess, coming up into this, into the new season of the Pokemon TCG. Competed pretty much full-time last season. I won two majors last season. Um, I have quite a few other dubs besides that in previous seasons, but uh, gonna be a little bit more content creator focused, I guess, moving forward, but still be competing somewhat as well. Going to like the biggest tournaments for sure still. Okay, sick. And uh, what we're gonna be doing today is a little bit different. Uh, this time I'm gonna present to you pairs of cards. Uh, you're gonna read those cards, analyze them, walk us through your thought process and what you're thinking about them. And out of that pair, you need to find out which of the cards is currently banned in Yu-Gi-Oh. All right, sounds good to me, I'm ready. This is your first. All right, sounds good. So first one here, painful choice. Select five cards from your deck, show them to your opponent, and your opponent selects one card among them. Add that card to your hand and discard the remaining cards to the graveyard. And then Foolish Burial, send one monster from your deck to the graveyard. You can kind of see the similarity between them in some way. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. Painful Choice sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen this card before, which makes me more inclined to think that this is probably the one of the two of these that is banned, because this one actually looks familiar. I don't know where I would have seen it. They're both very old, I'll say that. They're both going to end up with a decent amount of stuff. Well, the, the first one, uh, Painful Choice, you're going to end up with a decent amount of stuff in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, and it, obviously, you could just like put stuff. I mean, you could just take a bunch of cards, and if you just want some of them in the graveyard, some of them are going to end up there. Foolish Burial, obviously, you have a little bit more control over it, but it's only one card. That's where I'm kind of stuck on is like, how much is, this, is that one monster in your graveyard enough? Or is like getting, and also I guess the thing with painful choices was you get a card, but I guess like if you want if the cards you're taking or cards you want in your graveyard, then your opponent would just select a card that you'd want in your graveyard. And now it's in your hand and now it's not in your graveyard, but I guess it's still another card to your hand, which is always seems like pretty powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh! Just like card value is good. So getting plus one card doesn't seem terrible. Um, and just for the fact that there's multiple copies of every single card in your deck, like Foolish Burial, you'll guarantee one card that goes to your graveyard, uh, but Painful Choice should have effectively guarantees that that same card would also be in your graveyard, but then you'd also just end up with a card in your hand. So I'm going to go ahead and say between the two of these, just because Painful Choice, like, there's more going on, so there's more potential value to be gained. I'm going to go ahead and say Painful Choice is the banned card of these two. Right, so... You are very correct, yes, well done. Um, and I think what I'm really impressed with is you found what the advantage is, sort of say, of Foolish Burial over Painful Choice, which is uh, you have complete autonomy and agency of what you send. But then you didn't trip out, you correctly identified that with Painful Choice, you can simply send multiples of the ones that you want to trigger. And therefore your opponent is forced to give you the one in the graveyard if you want to trigger it. Yeah, and the biggest yeah. thing, I guess like another thing that I thought of with Yu-Gi-Oh as well is like, you never really go through your whole deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! So a lot of, like, it should be fairly easy with Painful Choice, it seems like, to pick out a bunch of cards that you probably won't see anyways, that you will only would want in your graveyard to begin with. So your opponent's gonna have to forcibly put them in there for you. So it shouldn't hurt you too much. Like, like have you been, have you been like play tested or something since no. we last spoke? Like, what's going <laughs> no, on here? No, no, but I think like the last video that we did definitely gave me more insight into the game in general to work with. Oh, that's really well uh, picked up on. Yeah, so uh, of course, as you correctly noted, like the speed of the game means that, well, those are typically like the negative quote unquote painful choice, at least many years ago, was that you're basically deleting five resources out of your deck. Uh, with fewer graveyard triggers back in the day, um, you are really depleting yourself of getting one really good card to your hand. Like sometimes you could do like, okay, I'm going to reveal three pot of greed and two graceful or two greed, two graceful and like one other uh, really good card. And like you get a good card, but now you've lost four good cards from the top of your deck to draw later in the duel. That's not an issue anymore. This is why Painful Choice was banned very, very close to the beginning of the lifespan of the game. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Here is your next pair. The first one I got here is Red Reboot. When your opponent when your opponent activates a trap card, negate the activation. And if you do set that card face down, then they can set one other trap card directly from their deck. For the rest of this turn, after this card resolves, your opponent cannot activate trap cards. You can activate this card from your hand by paying 
half your life points. So if I understand this correctly, your opponent goes to activate a trap card. You they can't act. You play this to stop the activation of that trap card, but then they get to go get another trap card from their deck and put it into play. But they can't activate any trap cards for the rest of their turn. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and then you can instead of setting this yourself to activate as a trap card, you could play it from hand and lose lose half your life points. Hold on. All right. And then the second card, trap stun, negate all other trap trap effects on the field this turn. I just want to make sure there's a very important distinction between these. Uh, trap stun is a normal spell, a uh, normal trap card, normal speed, uh, spell speed two. Um, whereas Red Reaper is a counter trap card. Um, so if you do, uh, you might remember Solemn Judgment is a um, is a counter trap card. Yeah. If you recall that card. So, I think so. Th just the major difference that I want to make sure you re recall here is that um, the speed of the cards are so you can you can respond to counter traps with counter traps. Uh, but you can't respond to a counter trap with a normal trap because they're too fast, basically. Um, so just keep that in mind when you consider Red Reboot and Traps done here because of that counter symbol on the trap card next to Reboot. I see it. So Red Reboot can only activate as a response to a trap card, whereas you could just activate Trap Stun? Uh, that's not anything to do with the speed per se, but Red Reboot does have that activation requirement that it's in response to a trap, whereas Trap Stun is negate all the trap effects. So you just like... Set this, go to your turn, again, wait a turn, and then flip the yeah. traps done, and then no traps can be used that turn. So you have the autonomy, I suppose, per se, like, in some ways. Okay, okay. All right. Um. Well, I think that's all the information I need. I'm going to go with... That's actually kind of tough. The thing, with, the thing I'm thinking about here is, like, how fast you can play Red Reboot, right? Because you can play it from your hand. It is half your life points, but if it just wins you the game, it doesn't matter, right? So, and with how fast Yu-Gi-Oh is, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh is not too many turns. Like, if this is just, like, a combo card where you stop their traps from stopping you and then you just win the game because you stopped them, then, you know, it doesn't really matter that you lost half your life points. And be able to play it quickly and efficiently is a pretty big deal. Because with the other one, with the traps on, you need two turns before you can actually get value out of it. Um, so, I, all right, so for the, the counter traps, does that mean with Red Reboot, you could activate Red Re Reboot and then they could counter Red Reboot with another trap card before it, like, concludes? If they have a specifically a counter trap card, then yes, they could counter your Red, red Reboot with, say, a Solemn Judgment. Okay. All right. I think I'm still going to go with Red Reboot is probably the banned card of these two, just because Trap Stun just seems too slow. But that's, like the, that's my hang up on Trap Stun is that it seems too slow. Or just like even almost like that, how fast you can use Red Reboot makes it seem better. All right. Um, any positives or anything to Trap Stun before you lock in, or do you see? Do you see like what maybe the trade off could be? I mean, the other the, another thing with Trap Stun doesn't it? It would stop your trap effects too. Does the other one do that? Did I misread that? Mm, yeah. You, re reboot wouldn't stop your own trap effects. Yeah, I feel like it's like another negative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like another negative for the Trap Stun. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Red Reboot is the, the band to two of these cards, but I feel like I'm wrong on this one now. No, no, you're absolutely correct. Red Reboot is significantly okay. better. You <laughs> absolutely hit the nail on the head. It doesn't matter, like, if you're losing half your life points. Um, the idea behind Red Reboot is that you wouldn't play it in a trap deck. You're obviously trying to, like, win the game on that turn. Um, yep. Red Reboot is very banned because there's very little ways to interact with it, specifically because of the counter trap. And I was hoping that you would pick up on the counter trap speed to recognize that that's, it's even stronger because now the pool of cards that can respond to Red Reboot diminishes by 90% or something because it's oh. too fast. It's a counter trap card. Okay, so it has can Red Reboot can only be countered by a counter trap card. Exactly. So okay, okay, okay. The, basically the only way realistically you're going to like stop Red Reboot is with the Solemn Judgment. So very few ways to actually f interact with it. Um, the, the advantage, quote unquote, about Trap Stun is uh, you didn't seem too hung up on the idea that by negating a card with Reboot, you set their card and then they get a free trap from their deck. So they have two trap cards. They can't use it that turn. But if you don't kill them that turn, then they just have gone like plus two on you. Yeah. Um, but... As you meant, as you correctly identified, the speed of the game means that it doesn't matter. Whereas traps done, you get to fire it off. They don't get anything. If if all if something goes wrong that turn, you know, nothing changes. Um, but they don't get a plus over you. So yeah, that's uh, well identified. Yeah, both cards seemed like they're used to win the game. Like you're trying to stop your opponent from doing anything so you can win the game that turn. Yeah, exactly. Traps traps done was definitely played in combo decks as a way to pop off and like maybe 
10 years ago, 11 years ago, but Reboot is uh, <laughs> significantly better and has been banned since because of just how powerful it is. Here's your next two. This should be a little bit harder, um, which I'm glad I included some that are a little bit more difficult because uh, apparently you've just become a Yu-Gi-Oh master in the span of the last <laughs> time we've, we've, we've discussed this. So here you go. This is two Ixie monsters. So I'm just going to like clarify exactly how Ixie summoning works. Ixie summoning is... Uh, they're extra deck monsters, which means you don't need to draw these. They are in a secondary pile. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like fusion monsters, if you recall how that works. Uh, you don't need to, like, draw them. You simply use the summoning material, which for both of them is two or more monsters. So as long as you combine all of those summoning materials, um, you put them together and then you summon these guys, basically. Okay, let me go through. This one, this one's probably gonna be tough, but we'll see. So we got... Number 86, Heroic Champion. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name after that. <laughs> you can just call it Rongo. Rongo? Yeah. All right. So it's a two or more. Wait, two or more max five level four warrior monsters. So that's saying you have to sacrifice two or more, right? So Ixie summoning is, it's called overlaying. So basically you, you kind of are sacrificing. You have, um, you know, up to five level four warriors on your side of the field. You just stack them all on top of each other. And then you bring Rongo out of your extra deck and you slap him on top of them. And now it, it's an Ixie monster with five warrior, uh, five materials underneath him. Does having, I mean, if I read through this, maybe it'll tell me, but does having yeah. more materials actually matter? It, like, would you yeah, ever you, do more? It, it will explain this to you. Okay. Once per turn, during your opponent's end phase, detach one material from this card. Okay. This card gains effects based on the number of materials attached to it. One cannot be destroyed by battle. Two gains 1500 attack, slash defense. Three unaffected by other card effects. Four, your opponent cannot normal or special summon monsters. Five, once per turn, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. So if you have five level four warriors under this you could do the five one you can do all of this yes you do all of them yeah so it's one plus two plus three plus so if you have a five material rongo it can be destroyed it becomes three thousand three thousand it's unaffected by card effects your opponent can't summon anything and you can uh <laughs> activate its effect to destroy all cards they control and then you detach one material from it at the end during during the end phase yeah Okay, that seems pretty good. That seems like you could just win the game with this thing if you get there, but it might be hard to get there. I don't know. Let's read the other one real fast. <laughs> All right, uh, Primathmic. Did I get that right? Yep. Alver... Alumbertion. Al Alumbertion. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Two, is it say two plus level four monsters? Yep. Two, okay. So you can do more. Well, similar to Rongo, you can use um, multiple um, so Rongo, you, you can summon Rongo with just two materials. It's not as good as the other effects. Um, but yeah, yeah Alumbertion is two plus, so you can go two, three, or four. Okay, you contribute one monster, special summon one level four math mech monster from your hand or graveyard. If this card is XYZ summoned, you can detach two to four materials from, that, from this card, then activate the appropriate effect. Uh, two, add one Math Mech card from your deck to your hand. Three, add one level four monster from your deck to your hand. Four, add one spell slash trap card from your deck to your hand. So a little bit different to Rongo. Basically, you, if you are just, basically, if you're just playing Math Mech, you could just summon this with two level fours, detach, add a Math Mech card. Um, if you're trying to like be a little bit spicier and it's kind of what and why I showed you this, it's the idea of combining a lot of resources into one guy. You can yeah. use three level fours. Um, and just add any level four in the game from your deck to your hand. Or you can detach four from this and add any spell and trap in the game from your deck to your hand. So you'd have to summon four things, create, make them all into this thing, and then mm -hmm. detach them all to get a spell or trap card from your deck. Yep. Yeah, so I guess like the biggest thing I'm like curious about is like how fast can you summon level four monsters? and How many can you get into play? How quickly? It makes me think that well, this card... Well, to answer that... Uh, these are, if you're specifically trying to use Alan Bershon's fourth effect, four material effect, you are building your deck around utilizing this. It's the same with yeah. Rongo Mini Ads. If you, if you are trying, you know, it's, it's not like an, on a whim, randomly, I'm going to summon this. You are definitely trying to build your deck to try and get off a four or five material Rongo, and you are building your deck to try and specifically use Alan Bershon's four material effect. Yeah. The four material effect from Alan Bershon just seems so much worse, though. You just get a spell or trap card from your deck. Maybe that, like, 
unique like uh, like cherry picking from your deck is that powerful, that much more powerful in Yu-Gi-Oh than I'm giving it credit. But it, I, I think the heroic champion, uh, what, what, do, what do we call it? Wrong, Rongo? Rongo. Rongo. I think to me, Rongo seems like a card that was created with the idea that it would never be good because it's just so ridiculous to get to its effect. But when you get to its effect, it's just broken. And then you could actually get to the effect and the card was better than the creators thought it was. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say Rongo is the banned card but this one's tough for me this one's really really tough because like there's so many other elements of like getting these things into play and how many things you can get into play consistently to utilize them but rongo's thing seems so much more powerful if you're able to get to the five for it so i'm just gonna go with rongo as the band of these two but this one i'm truly up in the air i feel like uh all right okay um you are correct rongo miniad <laughs> is the band card in this option um so a lot of people watching right now might be thinking like, uh, well, you know, Alan Bershon isn't used for that fourth. Yes, you're not. You math mech players never use the third and fourth effect. That's not the point. Um, Just for two. But uh, yeah, you basically are only ever using the two effect. But I wanted to show you this because some wacky combos in the game have existed that do utilize Alan Bershon as the three, four material. Um, nowhere near as consistent or as good as uh, Rongo Miniads. You're making Rongo Miniads as your win condition. You are making this yeah. as the boss monster of your deck. You are designing your deck to do this. And in fact, in the OCG in Japan, uh, we never really had them legal at the same time, I think, in TCG. Um, you used to be able to use the, a card called, I think, Number Evil. You could essentially cheat this out in some way. Um, summon Rongo with four materials and then you use a card called Sales Ban. And you declare Rongo and it never detaches because it's now... Um, how did sales ban work? It would basically make it that card cannot use its effect, but it's not an activated effect. You did notice that it's really powerful to destroy cards your opponent controls, but the reason why Rongo was so good is actually the fourth effect and the third effect. It's unaffected and your opponent can't summon. If you can't summon monsters, you can't out this. How do you out yep. this if it's unaffected and you can't summon monsters? So destroying all cards is nice, uh, but it's actually the four material effect that made this thing absolutely ludicrous. Is it one of those things where it's like it was just really hard to get to five like on tempo and like you had to kind of settle for four, but four was good enough? Or did you also get to five pretty regularly? So the way this was banned in the TCG, there was actually a different card called uh, Gossip Shadow that was also an XE monster, but it was level three. Uh, so it was basically this deck called Phantom Knight that was a mixture of threes and fours. You used to just make a Rongo with two materials, and then Gossip Shadow had this really, really unique effect where it could attach itself under another monster with all of its materials. So basically you transfer three or four XE materials under the Rongo Miniad, and now it suddenly goes from two to five. Mm. Um, that's basically the way it was like cheesed out in Phantom Knight was you would essentially summon this. Even if it detaches a material, you only need one turn because if your opponent can't summon for one turn, they, they're they just going to pass and then it goes to your turn. Then you just kill them. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, it does seem like yeah, you'd only need one turn. <laughs> okay, so I'm hoping this one's going to trick because these this is difficult. Here you go. All right. We got the Revolution uh, Synchron. Mm -hmm. If you synchro summon a power tool monster or a level seven or eight dragon monster, this card, where was I? This card in your hand can also be used as material. You can only use this effect of, you can only use this effect of revolution synchron once per turn. If you control a level seven or higher synchro monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. If you do special summon this card, also its level becomes one you can only use this effect of revolution synchron once per duel i might have to reread this one but i'm gonna read the read the other one yeah first next one's a little bit easier on the on the reading glow up bulb if this card is in your graveyard you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard and if you do special summon this card you can only use this effect of glow up bomb once per duel Okay, so just to reiterate and remind you how revolutions are going to work. So basically, uh, much like Synch uh, much like Xe summoning, it's uh, designed to make synchro monsters. Synchro monsters are in this secondary deck uh, alongside your fusions, your Xe's, your links, um, and you synchro summon into a level seven or eight dragon uh, by yeah. using it from your hand. Um, so basically, you, in order to do a synchro summon, typically you need a, a monster on the field another monster on the field that's a tuner, this is the tuner monster, uh, then you synchro summon. Uh, but because of his effect, you can actually use it from your hand. Now the second effect is that when you have a level seven or higher synchro on the field while it's in your graveyard, so you synchro off with it from your hand, it goes to the graveyard. Then when you control a level seven or higher synchro, you can then activate the graveyard effect, which it then revives itself back from the graveyard, mills the top card of your deck, um, and then its level becomes one. 
And remind me how combat in Yu-Gi-Oh works. Like if you swing with something to attack, are you targeting monsters or are you targeting your opponent's life force and then your opponent can choose to like block? You are targeting monsters specifically. It's like um, Hearthstone, if you've ever played that. Imagine yeah. Hearthstone, but every monster has taunt. You have to go through every monster before you can hit the face? Yep. Interesting. So glow up ball would basically just be like a meat shield then. Uh, it's a trigger tell. monster. So you're using it for synchro summoning. You do special summon this card. You can use this effect of glow bulb. So you could use this card to become like fuel to summon another monster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Basically. So because mm -hmm. so glow bulb is a tuner launched like revolution synchron. Um, so you synchro summon with it, and then now it's in the graveyard. You can then like revolution synchron, mill the top card of your deck, special summon it back, and then do another synchro. That's sort of the deal. Like what these cards are doing. I'll, I'll tell you that much. You're not using these cards as meat shields. You are using them as okay, okay. very specifically <laughs> combo forms of climbing with synchro monsters. That's what you're trying to do with these cards. All right, this one's tough. The the Revolution Synchron almost seems like it has... Oh, maybe I have that. Let me reread this one one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you synchro summon a, a power tool monster or a level seven or eight dragon monster, this card... There, there's wait. a lot of very good level 7 and 8 dragons. This card so. in your hand can also be used as material. When it says material, does it mean used as material to summon those yep, monsters? Exactly. Okay. You can only use this effect of Revolution Single once per turn. If you control a 7 or higher synchro monster while this is in your graveyard. And when it becomes material, does it go like into your graveyard, under the card? Yep. Become into part the of the card? It, go, it will go into yep. the graveyard. Yeah, it's really confusing because XC monsters become part of the monster, whereas Synchro materials, they just go to the grave like fusion materials, unless they did otherwise. So theoretically, you could use this to summon a 7 or 8, and then the second effect would trigger where you have a 7 or 8 in play, and then you could immediately get it from your graveyard and put it into play? Uh, so it doesn't trigger, you have the autonomy to choose when to do that, but yeah, you basically make a 7 or 8, it goes to the graveyard, then you can bring it back, climb up into another guy, etc, etc. Okay, I mean, that seems pretty good. Uh, the other one just seems like, um, there's like, I mean, there's also a requirement for the other one. That's like the big holdup, I guess, here with Globe Bulb. Globe Bulb, you just need to get in. You, but the thing with Globe Bulb as well, you can only use it once per duel. So you have like, what, one Globe Bulb in your deck? And then how do you get the Globe Bulb from your deck to your graveyard? And then I guess you don't really care too much about sending the top card of your deck to the graveyard. Um, yeah, they both have the exact same, you know, summon yeah. from grave by milling effect. So that's not too relevant. Although sometimes you get lucky, hit a good card, but that's not really the point of the cards. Yeah. So similar to Revolution Synchron, Glow Bulb, the idea is like, you know, it's there, you use it as a material for something. Now I will say Glow Bulb is a little more generic because Revolution Synchron, you can only use the hand effect to do a seven or eight or Synchro Dragon. Yeah. Whereas Glow Bulb, you can use it as a fusion fodder, you can use it as link material. Um, so you can go make a link monster with Glow Bulb, then activate the effect, bring it back, use another link monster. So you don't need to Synchro someone with Glow Bulb. You can just use it as uh, fodder for link summoning, whereas Revolution Synchro is a little bit more specific in that it's for synchroing to really get most of the good parts of the effect off. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with... This one's this one's tough for me as well, but I'm going to go with Glow Up Bulb just because it's simpler, it's more straightforward. It seems like it can be used in more decks, which, like, maybe make it universally just that much better. But I guess, like, for the same reason, if, like, the Revolution Synchron is used in just fewer decks, it's just is too broken in one deck and just had to go, but... I'm gonna go with the glow up bulb here. This one I'm a little bit 50-50 uh, on though, for sure, just like the last one. What's uh, the deal for you, like the deal breaking effect? It's because it's more generic and it's a little bit more applicable in different yeah, situations, just, I suppose? More generic, yeah, that's what I'm going with. All right, final answer? Yep, lock it and glow up. This is incredible. You are completely correct. That is insane. <laughs> It's so strange. I feel like if you don't know Yu-Gi-Oh in the context of Yu-Gi-Oh, you read Revolution Synchron and you think to yourself, this thing is ridiculous because it lets you synchro from the hand and it brings itself back and you get to use it again. Whereas Glow Bulb is just, you know, you, you almost thought it was a meat shield for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought where, That's what I thought these were going to be. Um, <laughs> we're just like, oh, it's just, and then it, it, for that reason, I was almost going to pick Glow Bulb because it feels like it's like a, I don't know, it's a good defensive card, but, but, uh, it's a good thing you explained it to me because once I read once per duel, I was like, oh, so you can't like run three of these in here. Somehow end up with them all of them in your graveyard and then use them to like stall for time while you set up your bigger combo against a more aggressive deck. But they're not meat shields and you can only do it once. But yeah, it being more generic, that's the thing that kind of like led me to be like, well, if you can put it in like a bunch of decks and the, the Revolution Synchron is like limited to like, I don't know how many different decks, how many different decks played or have played the, the Revolution Synchron. Revolution Synchron is currently at three and... I can't think of a deck that's playing it. Maybe Tier Lament. 
Um, mm -hmm. it, it is very specific. It needs to be played in a deck that wants to summon multiple 7 and 8 synchros. Yeah. That was a big thing as well. It's like, that seems high. Like, 7 and 8 seems high. I don't remember exactly, like, the, like, how much that actually equates to how hard it is to get things out. But I was like, well, those it's are It's actually levels. really easy, to be fair. That's it's the easy? interesting thing. Yeah, okay. because <laughs> if... <laughs> I think, like, because you've not, you don't exactly know how synchro summoning works, it makes it seem yeah. a little bit more. Um, yeah, because so the synchro summoning is based on levels. So basically, if you have a, if you normal summon a level four monster, typically this is what Rai Revolution Synchro is played currently in tier limit in Masto as an example. So you summon Rhino Har, a level four monster. You activate the effect. Your opponent negates it. Then you can just immediately synchro into a Ancient Fairy Dragon from your hand with the Revolution Synchron, and then bring it back and then make Visas, and then you get a search, and then you do your full combo. Um, so it's three plus four to make a seven. That's how you synchro summon. It's based oh, okay, on the okay. levels. But it's it's actually amazing that you got Glow Bulb. Exa and it's nothing to do with synchro summoning, um, mostly. Uh, Glow Bulb has so much applicability because you can summon it with something like Halka Firebrax back in the day when it was banned, um, and then make another link material it's not really based on synchro summoning you just use it as a generic like link climbing material and then use the effect in the grave to bring it back maybe you can use a synchro maybe you can use a link as a link material but because glow bulb is so generic it somehow is better than revolution synchron yeah was this like played in most decks when it was not banned i can't even remember what actually got glow up bulb banned now that i think about it um but it was probably somewhere around about that uh 2018 era with Halka Fibrex, but yeah, Glow Bulb is still is banned and is currently still banned, which is uh, genuinely incredible. Is it, it should you feel like it's a card that maybe should be unbanned? Is it like not? Does it feel like it wouldn't have that big of an impact if it wasn't uh, if it was unbanned right now? Well, the funny thing is the card that actually made this thing super abusable is now banned and has been banned for a while. They've just not mm. brought back Bulb in this time, um, so it is kind of bizarre in some ways. Uh, because there's a, there's a meme in the Yugo community that... So Hulk Fibrax was this very generic Link monster that summons tuners from the from the deck. Um, mm -hmm. Every deck, every combo deck was playing Hulk Fibrax, just summoned lots of tuners from the, from the deck. Very slowly over time, over months and years, Konami kept banning lots of tuner monsters. Um, and then eventually they realized, wait a minute, the problem isn't all of the tuners. The problem is Halka Firebrax summoning these tuners from the deck for free. Uh, so eventually they banned Halka Firebrax and then very slowly they're, they have begun to bring back a lot of these tuner monsters. Like Destrudo, um, like, uh, uh, not Gofu, I suppose, uh, like uh, Blackwing, Steam the, Steam the Cloak. And now Glow Bulb is, I think, one of the few victims of, of that era who's still <laughs> on the ban list. Bring the ball back. All right, so... Um, I need to start finding some more difficult ones for you. That is incredible. You got four for four. <laughs> well done. Cruising um, so far. Yeah. Have you got any uh, closing thoughts or something on the game and based off of what you've seen from these cards? No, no. No, I had a ton of fun or having a ton of fun. You have nothing that <laughs> doesn't tell you anything about the game for like mechanically or for something. like Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, the biggest thing I just don't have a good understanding like you, like you mentioned is like the summoning process outside of just like, like putting a... A creature into play mm -hmm. so that's like still like a missing piece in my understanding of the game uh in general uh, but i'm getting getting starting to get my starting to understand it a little bit better for sure especially going through the two the two creatures we had which i was like definitely up in the air on that those ones but the the effects from the um alember what is it alember alember alembertion alembertion <laughs> did not seem as good as the uh uh, I forget the name of the other one too now. Rongo. Some, Rongo. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just like how how creatures end up in play is like this is something I'm still kind of missing from the game in general, um, and my knowledge is definitely lacking. It's where I probably just have to like pick up the game and actually play with it a little bit more, because um, I have like very limited knowledge in actually playing the game. It's just limited to just like some games of goat format, and that's about it. But I don't even remember the last time I actually played that. So yeah, when are we getting some? Uh... Pokemon champion plays Master Duel. Maybe at some point. Maybe at some point I'll uh, when there's some downtime in the Pokemon TCG, maybe I'll pick up Master Duel and see how see how it goes. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for joining. And one last time, let us know where people can check out your content and uh, see more of you. Of course, yeah, yeah. You can check me out uh, Azul GG on Twitch, on YouTube, and uh, on Twitter. It's Azul underscore GG. So check me out there as well. Links in the description as always. If you want to check out Azul's channel, uh, thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.